just wanted to point out a really slick application of bitwise operators that I came across a couple of days ago reading uh, applied cryptography, um, which I'd never seen before. So swapping two things is something that you need to do a lot in programming. And, and so if you want to uh, swap two integers, you know, the typical thing is to, to write a function like uh, swap takes, maybe, if you want to swap ends, then you need to take a pointer to one end and then uh, a pointer to another end, and then you need to come up with some kind of um, intermediate thing, you know, like a holder, and then you make holder be equal to one of these two things, and then you do x equals y, and then you do y equals holder, and uh, I should probably be dereferencing some things. Hold on a second. Yeah, so that's not going to be a pointer. I need to dereference here, and dereference here, and dereference here, and uh, dereference there. So that will, you know, I have to use pointers because of the variable scope, which we've talked about in a, in a previous lecture. But the important thing is that there's some intermediate holding place. And I thought that there was like, you know, some theoretical nece necessity to having some place to put things while the swap's happening. But then I read about this awesome XOR swap, uh, which just uses uh, the bitwise XOR operator. So there's maybe a few things going on here. Uh, one is that we're using a, a macro which I haven't talked about uh, yet. Um, so, you know, I, I should talk about that later, but if you want to know more about it now, you can always Google C macro. And um, what happens is before the, the code gets to the compiling stage, the preprocessor can go through and replace uh, things that are defined using this uh, define preprocessing command uh, with how they're defined. So this is saying when, whenever you see something of the form XOR swap AB, just replace it in line in the code with, with this expression. So what this what this line gets replaced with after the, the preprocessing is just exactly literally this line but with X's and Y's instead of A's and B's. Uh, so if I were to do it like this, it would have uh, the same the same effect. Uh, and so here's another thing that we haven't talked about is what's going on with these these commas. So in C, you can always separate a, a series of commands with commas, and they're just evaluated from left to right. So what this does is it makes x equal to itself xored with y then it makes y equal to x itself xored with the new x, and then it makes uh, x, uh, x xor, like this is, you know, the new x from here, xor with this new y from here, and the effect of all that crap is that uh, the two variables get their values exchanged, and um, so I've already run this example here. You can see initially x is 7 and y is 20, and then magically x becomes 20 and y becomes 7. So there's a, a, a Wikipedia article on, on this algorithm and you can you can study this picture and read more about how it works. As a, a mathematician I kind of think of it working sort of algebraically uh, you know so if you if you do if you think about what's happening in this this first example in this first statement here you have some new thing let's just you know say here a and b are two things that you just start with so what this first thing does is it makes z equal to a x or b and now you have uh, this this new thing y coming in at this stage and, and y is equal to um, the same old b XOR with this uh, this new Z, right? And then uh, finally you have the XOR of those two things, which is uh, 
Is that right? So you have this, you have z being xored with, right? Because this is this is kind of is what z is, being xored with uh, this, which is y, right? And now if you just kind of fiddle out uh, and see what's happening here, some things start to cancel. So uh, if I expand this z, then I get y is equal to b and, what is z though? z is a and b. And whenever you XOR something with itself, it cancels out. So that's easy to, that's easy to see, isn't it? If you just have two binary, or just one binary number, and what happens if you XOR something with itself? Then you get um, 0, 0, 0. So that always happens. Then what happens if you XOR any binary number whatsoever with zeros? It just uh, it doesn't do anything, right? It's like the identity. So you get the same number over again. And so what happens here is that these this becomes like a x ordered with zero, which is just a, All right? And that's what it, that's what does the first swap because b is is set to a, right? So that swaps b and a right there. And now we can expand uh, this last line. So uh, z is um, a x or b. And we just saw that this y is really the same thing as a, and this is the same thing as b x or zero equals b, and um, this is the last assignment, so that's what makes uh, a equal to b. So the effect is that the two things get swapped, which is pretty cool. And uh, maybe that was too much explanation, but another, you know, sometimes there are things more complicated than ints or uh, like structures or and languages that have object-oriented programming, sometimes you might want to swap two objects and then you have to do something a little bit more sophisticated than this, then you do need the holder variable. But this is a, a cool thing, cool application of bitwise operators that's worth mentioning here.